Hello everyone, I'm EA Trooper and I'm here to talk about Undertale. How it went so far with the pacifist run. There's going to be a lot of spoilers in this little talk. So I suggest you watch what I've done in my previous videos before watching this. Or if you already know, it just doesn't matter. But <laughs> that uh, last fight flowy during the end of the pacifist he just, whoosh, just a bunch of vines everywhere took the souls without anybody knowing god damn it I hate that flower <laughs> yeah yeah still hate that flower I don't know what to do with that man and then, yeah, he turned into Azrael. And that was a hard fight. Kind of. Yeah, you know why I was even doing commentary? I was just focusing on the dodging and whatnot. Just because you. It's. Damn. Even though I'm still not good at it, it's still pretty hard. Obviously. Mm, what else? Thinking. Oh yeah, the true lab? That was a scary place. It was just spooky. So much spooks. It's a very spooky place. So much spoops. Don't even know what to do. Like, holy man. That was insane. Like, oh my god. Like, with all those weird creatures or whatever they are. If you know Earthbound, you should probably know Gygus. That one boss in the very end. Like, one of the first monsters I encountered was... Looked a lot like Gygus. The, whatever the thing is. I don't really know what they're called. They're have some really weird name to it. Uh, let me look it up. See a true lab. Yeah, it's a pretty crazy place. Completely a different tone, like unlike all the other places. Like Temi and whatnot, Tem Village. <sighs> Um, oh, you know that one weird giant machine thing with like two eyes and like the two mantis things or whatever? Things that's on the for the mouth. That was a lot like uh, Flowey, Photoshop Flowey. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Amalgate. Um. Amalgamates. Yeah. <laughs> and when you were down in the True Labs, there was the VHS tapes. That was totally insane because then at the end it explained something. The fallen child. The fallen child. When they, you name the fallen child at the very beginning of the game when you start off, like, you named the, ch the first child that has fallen. And you're playing not as the character you named yourself, but as Frisk. Which is probably quite obvious. <laughs> Damn. The. Oh. Yeah, the giant machine, the, uh, the DT extraction machine uh, for determination. Yeah, the amalgates. Yeah, with that one little guy it's, that came out of the sink. Yeah, that was from the uh, whatever it is thing from Earthbound. Yeah. 
quite crazy. <sighs> hey, what? Oh, it turns out I kind of missed something when I was doing it. Yeah, trivia. Toby foxes are bound hack. Um, foes near the th whatever blah blah blah. <sighs> hmm. Just kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, that ending though with with the true and the true love, the VHS is just just insane right there. Like explaining about the fallen child that the first child that has fallen and you're playing as Frisk. Uh, yeah, Frisk. Not yourself. Just insane. <laughs> Just, wow. I don't know what to say. But yeah, and the true pacifist ending. Just. Yeah. Oh, you know what, in the VHS lab, VHS room, the TV and whatnot, I noticed something with, um, yeah, some of the VHS tapes are kind of sticky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, talking about the very first thing. I don't know what to say. But, yeah. So probably next I'm going to go try to do genocide. I'll see if I can try to do that, but I'm not too sure. Well, be really be able to. And yes, I know about the Sans fight. You know, you can't. It's hard to stay away from spoils. This is the bloody internet. Like people will talk about anything and everything about a game. Completely spoiling it. <sighs> yeah. You know like the fight with um the true ending where Flowey comes and talks to you, saying that you have the power to just Reset everything. Nobody will know. Only you would know, have that known, have that power. Just. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I want to try something later. Hmm. Talking for like nine minutes now. <laughs> Just wow. But, hmm. Kind of want to bring up some really stupid thing that I saw earlier. Well, a while back, but oh my god, it's just made me cringe so hard. Already. 100 probably kind of know about it already. It's my YouTube friend and friend in real life. 
If you haven't heard about it, Human Tail, which is Undertale characters, but humanized. But there's some, let's say, problems. Every goddamn character is some vague shade of brown, and they're all some weird, non-straight sexual preference, to say. Oh my god. It's just so awful. What was it? Let me see here. Um, like... Tutorial. Trans woman andromatic? I don't even know what that even means. Like, let's look at Andromantic. They can call me a freaking like sexist person or whatever. I don't even care about this. This made me cringe so goddamn hard. Like every single person in this ask human tale. They're like some vague shade of brown except Chara. Is the only white person. And I don't get it. Okay. Andromatic. A person, regardless of their gender, is romantically attracted towards male identified people. It helps to find romantic attraction for people who don't have identified themselves in a giant gender binary system. Uh, can't say which gender is same or opposite to theirs. I don't get it. Frisk is non binary. Uh, Undying, trans women, what, and lesbian, which is kind of already canon, obvious, bisexual, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever, metaton, trans man and pansexual, a mad dummy for some odd reason, trans, I don't even know what that is, Tr trans mask, Trans mask. What does it mean? Trans masculinity is a term used to describe transgender people who are assigned female at birth, but identify masculinity. <sighs> and demi boy. The buddy for you is a demi boy. Demi guy. Gender wiki. Demi guy is listed no one as demi. Boy, man, demi male people. Gender identify describing someone who's partially but not wholly into the festival as a man. I. Oh my god. And. Lists a romantic? Lists what? Lists a romantic. What does that mean? Let me move my mic a little bit. Just. Um. Oh my god. Okay. And. Ace. Lithro romantic asexual. Naps blue. Arrow. Aromantic. Uh, aromantic. Uh. Aromantic person is a person who experiences little or no. A romantic attraction. Huh? To others, when where romantic people are in an emotional need to be with another person or in like, isn't it asexual or whatever? I think. Like when you don't really have a sexual drive to say. <sighs> yeah. And Max Luke is demisexual. Let's see. Papyrus, trans masculine diromantric. Let's see. Demi romantic. Oh, lesser romantic. 
Um, according to well, there's a romantic person who feels romantically attraction but not feeling their needs, feelings or reciprocated or who does not like receiving romantic gestures. So another meaning for asexual and demi-romantic is a type of gray romantic who only experiences romantic attractions after developing an emotional connection beforehand them my romantics do not experience primary romantic action but they are capable of secondary romantic action a sexual contra con counterpart to demi romantic or demisexual I don't get it the romantic pansexual is very sans a gender a gender where where do all these terms come from? Agender is a term which can be literally translated as without gender. It can be seen either as a non-binary gender identity or as a statement of not having a gender identity. People who identify as a agender may describe themselves in one of the words following genderless or lacking gender, gender neutral. Oh my god, bloody fajita. Panoramic asexual char non binary just like Frisk. Azrael, bi gender. I don't get that. What is bi gender meaning? Bi gender is identity, gender identity, which can be literally translated as two genders or double gender. Bi gender people are experiencing multiple, exactly two gender identities, either so definitely or varying between two. These two genders can be male and female, but could also be include non-binary identities. What? Asgore. Trans man and gay. Just gay. No random name, just gay. And how can he be gay? He had a romantic Involvement with Toriel and Gaster, uh, gender fluid, aero flex, polysexual. What? Let's look up this term then. Aero flux, polysexual. And, um, Attraction to multiple genders, bisexuality or pansexuality, forms of polysexuality, polysexual gender, and your tricks. Oh my god. Just. I don't get this crap. Really, I don't. Like. I want to play one clip. It's one clip from one video from Mindless Gonzo. Um, what is it? Um, it's Cringe Mastermind. Or so whatever. Yeah, Cringe Mastermind. Just. I'm gonna play one clip from that video. Where Kitty or Astro Boy GF t kind of talks a bit about something about this. So, see you guys at that point. And last question If you want to go on a platonic date to a fancy restaurant in formal wear and not getting romantically involved, what kind of relationship are you asking for? Um, friends with benefits? A free fuck with no strings attached. What did you say? A domestic relationship with butter on top. Actually, it's a friendship, unless you're one of the label whores of Tumblr, which had labeled this queer platonic. 
What the fuck is what? What the oh fuck my... is that? Question, question. Why are all these new suburb terms coming in? I don't labels. understand that. It's the labels. What? It's the whole labels movement, honey. Well, let, let me let me just say this, and this is a question for everybody who's watching right now. Why the fuck do we need labels? Seriously, why do we need labels to identify who we are when we know who we are as ourselves? Why do we need like gender queer, gender this, gender that when you know who you are on the inside? And if we're supposed to be all equal, and we were taught, especially when we were young, that we don't need labels to define who we are. I understand maybe for sexual preferences, maybe. I understand for maybe, like, personal pronouns and stuff like that. But why do we need all of this kind of, like, gender queer, gender this, gender that? It's like, I, I sort of fear of getting it wrong and talking to someone and saying, hello, ma'am, when they're like, I'm sorry, I'm gender fluid, I'm both. What am I supposed to call you? Gender fluid, or am I going to offend you like that? Tell me that. Can I call you a man girl? Because that's what, that's what I can easily identify. May I call you gender, a female? Blah, blah. I really don't want to call right. you a female. Um, this is Future EA. I'm just recording this again because the first part I did wasn't really that good, but. Uh, yeah, still. Why do we need this stuff? Just. It's just doesn't make any sense like yeah like what kitty said um just yeah i understand it for like sexual preferences but but what about all this other stuff like it doesn't make any sense like oh my god it's um stupid i don't know like oh my god I don't know what to say at this moment. Other than I'm cringing at my own voice because I'm listening to this again. Um, yeah. Still, like, queer platonic? Like, what? Isn't it? Doesn't queer mean, like, just another word for, like, being gay or whatever? Yet, queer platonic. Like,. You can call me a bloody sexist person, whatever you want, but I have no problem with, like, LGBTQ people, but it's like, idiots, like, the person who made the human tail, which I do not understand. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Just saying that, I just also bring up a part that I remember in the video which has to do with Leafy's here where he kind of did a reaction thing to about to like this one woman calling like any men who, who are like sexist and whatnot it's just stupid like all people that aren't transgender are transphobic like oh my god Jenner remembers me what I saw on Facebook at one time, which had to do with, like, feminists and gender equality in giant quotes, I will tell ya. Uh, give me a few as I try to load up this thing. Yeah, I just don't get it. Like, feminists? transgender people like every I'm gonna say this every decade is known for something like like the 1920s it was known for the Great Depression I think or I might have gotten that wrong it's being in the 1910s when like the 60s it's known for its music or whatever I forget what it was about 70s disco 80s for its music. 90s, I don't really know much, remember? Um, what else? Yeah, like I was saying, but like every decade is known for something. But now, you know what 2010 is going to be known for? 
We're going to be known for transgender people. We're going to be known for feminists and all this crap. Just, my god. I just don't get this. We're also going to be known for Trump. Yes, Trump. Yeah. We're going to be known for him, definitely. All this other stuff. Yeah. But, and, yeah. Gender equality. Women are brave if they hit men. Men are evil, brutal perverts if they hit the women. Women are romantic if they suddenly kiss men. Men are perverted if they suddenly kiss women. Just what? It's like the same thing. It's a mistake if a woman goes into a man's bathroom. Men are perverted if they go into a woman's bathroom. If they're both mistakes, just... And the, if the woman says, let's split the bill, she is independent. If the man says it, he is cheap. What? <sighs> a woman staring at a man's crotch is flirting. But if a man stares at a woman's breast, it's perverted and offensive. It's still the same bloody thing as... Men, woman doing work, help me. And men doing work, it's natural. We're both doing work. And the police, let's see. The man saying he touched, she touched my crotch. Police, meh, who take cares? And if the woman says he touched my breasts, man's going. Bye bye. <sighs> Gender equality, I tell ya. Oh my god. Yep. Every decade is bloody known for something. I'm gonna be known for this goddamn stupid shit. Pardon for my strong language. But everyone, this is me, E Trooper, signing off.